Something is going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting edition of Talk Nerdy to Me. Here I am with Jeffro and MPS. G'day guys, how are we doing today? G'day Dags. Hey guys, how you doing? We've got our first major presentation that we want to put through uh, for tonight, which is about um, science fiction movies that try to predict the future and which one's got it right and which one's got it wrong. So we're going to pre press a couple of buttons here to get something very exciting for you to look at. And here we go. So... This is all about predicting the future, which movies got it right. And, of course, from the outset, we have to ensure, oops, there we go, we have to ensure that we don't include post-apocalyptic movies because clearly that didn't happen, dystopian movies because that hasn't happened yet, depending on where if you live in North Korea or not, and, of course, alien invasion movies. They clearly don't count because uh, there um, is nothing there. So, all right, so let's kick it off, shall we? It's a very exciting stuff. All right, so Trip to the Moon in 1902. Now, the funny thing about this is that we, as in these days, look upon, oh, yeah, they've been at the moon a few times now and they've done all the space travel and whatever else. But the key thing is in 1902, so they make a film, uh, a short film about going to the moon. The irony of all this is the fact that space flight, that's space flight, airplanes hadn't even been invented yet, okay? So the first flight wasn't by the Wright brothers, wasn't until 1903. So at that point in time, can you imagine an audience watching this saying, what a crock of rubbish this movie is. There's no one in the world we'll ever get to the moon, we can't even fly yet, right? And then, of course, the following year, airplane flight starts, and then, of course, 15 years later, World War One, and so on. But I thought how ironic it is that they should create a movie about going to the moon long before, or like before, you could even actually fly a plane. Uh, and, of course, we all know uh, what happened, um, you know, 60, what was it, six, seven years later, so it's kind of groovy. So in terms of predicting the future, even back in 1902, that is a definite tick, so how good is that? The next one, Metropolis from 1927. Video conferencing, how groovy is that? Now, of course, today we take it for, for granted, people who can use video conferencing and talk to people face-to-face -face and whatever else. Back then, the irony of this particular sequence in 1927 when they're having a video conferencing session is that televisions didn't even really exist at that point. They were still in their crude form. They're still being invented. And most people had never even seen one at that point. So they weren't even available to the public. The uh, invention was still being refined. So people watching this movie may have thought that's never going to happen. And, of course, it did happen. And, and uh, it's become a very common form of communication. So that's a big tick as well. So well done to those particular shows. Also in Metropolis. Now, of course, they have the robot Black Maria, okay? So you're thinking, well, there's no robots like this running around in real life. As it turns out, they're kind of not far from it. Oh, hang on. That's the wrong button. Sorry. Oh, hang on. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> back, 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 back. Where's my, where's my thing? Here we go. Sorry. Let's just um, rewind that. You'd be thinking there are no robotics, but there are animatronics. And these days, they're looking more and more realistic. And this is actually currently from Disneyland Japan. They're actually building these at the moment. And that is kind of freaky because they look as about as realistic as you can get in terms of the movements and uh, everything else. So they're not trying to do the old uncanny valley and make them look 100% realistic. But the fact that they can move the way they are, that I think is definitely a big tick if I've lost my thing there. So there you go. Now, some movies did try uh, to get it right. And you think they seriously sat down and thought about trying to get the future predicted, and in 1968, they were probably thinking, well, you know, in 30, 40 years hence, we're probably in space and, like, in, like, ships and all the rest of it. And, of course, they got it as about as far wrong as you could possibly get. And, of course, in 2001, the real 2001, this space station clearly didn't exist. And not only that, the first International Space Station module only got launched three years prior, and the crew complement version, which was just a little box, effectively, didn't even get launched until 2000. And, of course, as you look in this picture, um, the space station has obviously been in construction for quite some time before 2000, the year 2001. So that was a, definitely a big wrong that didn't happen. So as, how unfortunate is that? Moon bases, of course. Sure, it's great for space 1999 and all the rest of the Clavius base. Based on this image, they must have been building this base for years and years and years, considering how established it was. And, of course, that definitely did not happen either. So 2001 A Space Odyssey, they may have tried to predict the future, but they got it completely ass about. 
traveling in the discovery out to the stars well that definitely hasn't happened we are so far behind from that that it'd probably be like generations before they start doing this sort of thing so that was a big um cross as well and of course sure you might be able to invent space taxis but the big killer here of course is when you start promoting companies that no longer existed in 2001 so they sort of died a death on that one too so that's a big eh. so 2001 a space odyssey uh sucked the big one big time interesting though is interestingly though they did get one thing right skype and uh now of course back then video conferencing uh as we mentioned with uh, metropolis seemed like a, a common thing but it didn't actually become a reality until many years later and this is effectively because you know you've got the business side of things which is what we had with video conferencing and now of course we've got skype and 2001 definitely predicted that so uh well done to those guys then because i mean uh, a lot of people use skype now and of course it's all to do with video so how good is that so whoop, well done to them so they got one right uh after all that uh, now, 2010, the year we made contact, by and large, sucked the big one just as much as 2001 did, but they did get one thing right. There's no USSR in, 2000, in 2010, in out the real 2010, but there's plenty of Russian and US tension even today. So to a large degree, take out the Soviet Union, convert them over to just Russia, uh, but they've definitely got the whole issue with a bit of tension between the two countries. So that is definitely a big tick. So well done to 2010. Star Trek. Now, of course, Star Trek has set hundreds of thousands of billions of years into the future, uh, and there's a million things you can talk about, like you know, the communicators and the transporters and all that. None of that stuff's come to pass. But one thing that they did get right, uh, considering the uh, show set for what's 300 years in the future, and this actually happens now, is retina scanning. And of course, a lot of people use retina scanning on their phones uh, for identification and entering doors and all the rest of it. So they definitely got th that one right. So a bit of eye scanning going on. So well done to Star Trek to the Rolf Khan for that. Blade Runner, 1982. Okay, so we don't have replicants. We don't have flying cars. Uh, and, of course, we don't have endless rain and endless night in Los Angeles. But one thing that this film did predict very well was gigantic, big-ass billboards that are all digital. And they are, if you're not so much here, like in, you go in the city and there's a few floating around, but like New York, Japan, these things are everywhere and they are huge absolutely massive if you ever see uh, footage of new york at night time these massive billboards promoting all these products and um they may have been around for quite a few years but blade runner sort of showed it and when we saw it like in the film you're thinking oh who the hell would have pictures that large and as it turned out uh they actually absolutely exist so blade runner definitely got that one very well there you go so that's another tick for them so how good is that minority report now minority report still another 30 years away uh, but one of the things that I know companies are trying to do is the whole computer, no, there's no screen. It's all holographic projection and using hands to move stuff around. I have seen examples of that, and so it's a little way off yet, and it might not become uh, standard technology. But currently there are examples where you can actually use this sort of like thing, and you see it a lot in CSI and all those uh, sort of programs. So I tend to think that this isn't actually far away if uh, it hasn't been developed already. So Because uh, in the movie, that was a very cool thing, so when they're sort of moving all the screens around and twisting things and so on and so on, very, very cool. And, of course, if you can remove the concept of having a, an actual monitor plugged in, that's one less power lead you've got to worry about. Uh, and, of course, uh, you can pretty much you know, use it anywhere, which is kind of groovy. So uh, I reckon that's a bit of a tick too because that isn't far away. The other thing that a Minority Report correctly predicted uh, is uh, shopping for yourself personally, where, like now, I'm sure you guys, just like myself, get emails from eBay and say, hey, Darren, do this, and hey, have you seen this? You shop for this last time. You want to buy this thing this time. It's all customization for yourself. And I know that in supermarkets last year they were trialling uh, things in like Woolworths and Coles where you would have a device on your phone and when you bought all these products, so if you bought milk and bread and whatever else, when you went back next time, it would say, hey, while you're here, did you see this version of, of, of milk? Have you checked out that version of the bread? Have you looked at this? And they're trialling that right now. Uh, so it's all customised and personalised to you. And, of course, that's kind of freaky too because as if the technology knows who you are. And it doesn't. It's all because it's more based on your shopping habits and it just builds up this profile. And that's happening now. So um, so you buy yourself um, a, a computer monitor from a store and then later on, on your computer, you know, messages come up saying, hey, Fred, have you looked at this other store or these other monitors and these other bits of technology? So that's actually happening today. So that's uh, another thing that Minority Port got right. So well done to them. 
Um, now, uh, in total recall, now, of course, this is still like 50 years away, effectively, from when it's actually set. But I have seen, or apparently there are scanners, they can't scan like skeletons and stuff at airports, but they can detect heat and metal and whatever else. And uh, it's becoming a bit of a thing. I think it's overseas. They're doing trials uh, where they're trying to arrange it. So instead of you walk through the metal scanner, they can actually see like uh, heat, metal and whatever else is, you know, anti-terrorism and to stop people sort of being able to sneak things through. So um, if that doesn't exist just yet, that won't be very far away. And so I think because when we saw this in Total Recall, you know, it worked browser of the movie, you can see the skeletons is all very, very funny. But uh, the reality is that this actually could be a technology that could work quite well, uh, especially in high security environments. So that's definitely a key. Well, that's, that's currently at airports now. If you remember when we went to the US, you see the baggage as your bags go through the the scanner, you actually see what's inside of it. So, uh, yeah, that's that's sort of happening now. Yep, yep, exactly right. So there you go. So that's another one they sort of got right. Now, of course, your whole thing with Johnny Cab, it's all very, very funny. You've got a little guy there pretending to be a cab driver when there's actually no cabs at all. But, of course, this then leads on to the concept of what Demolition did, Man did, um, of uh, self-driving cars and electric cars. So the difference here is that uh, Total Recall is set like another 50 years away or whatever it is, another 30 years away, whereas Demolition Man is only 12 years away. And there's no doubt that electric cars in how they were showing them in Demolition Man are definitely going to become reality because electric cars exist today. And, of course, the self-driving thing. Uh, now, it's not officially here. Not everybody can buy one, but they are, as you, we all know, they're testing them, and you can almost bet your bottom dollar by 2032 they are going to be out and about somewhere. They may not look the same as this. They might not sound the same, but the technology to make them work will definitely be there in one form or another. And um, this is one thing I think, like, Demolition Man had a few good ideas, and this is definitely something that's come up and go, yeah, they were really on the ball. Back in um, the 90s, we probably would have thought, oh, electric cars, yeah, we can understand that, but self-driving, definitely not going to happen. Well, as it turned out, it's... Uh, happening and it's happening very quickly too so well done to those guys they got that right another thing that demolition man correctly predicted uh was voice activation on computers where you can talk to a computer and it will actually do something for you uh, rather than having to use a keyboard or some or a mouse interface you just speak to it and it just scrolls through and of course the whole google what are they called chrome the cast thing whatever it's called the that thing where you can just talk alexa. to it and, okay. sorry what i think it's uh, uh alexa is that right? Yeah, that'll work. Um, yeah, so the ability of voice recognition, effectively. So, And, of course, we all know in cars you can actually have your car set up. So you just say to it, please dial Fred, and then Fred gets numbers, gets called. So uh, voice activation is actually here, and, uh, and it's actually a, quite a common thing, whether we realise it or not. So, uh, so, yeah, they did well on that one too. Um, another thing, of course, in Demolition Man was the house being controlled by voice. This is a step up to what we just saw where you walk in and you say lights, blinds, this, that, that is all becoming what they call the Internet of Things, where a house is controlled by technology, all voice activation. You can sit on the couch, watch on the TV, turn off things left, right and centre, uh, and it's all sort of happening like right now. And this was predicted back then. I don't know how people back then, as in 1993, thought, oh, that's rubbish, that'll never happen, but it does actually happen right now. And there are people fitting out their houses specifically for this. So um, heaven help them if they ever have a power outage. Nothing will open or work. But, uh, um, yeah, that's the, the future. So they've done a very good job at uh, thinking this through. So well done. I, I, um, I'd, suggest, I'd suggest that Star Trek did that first. Yeah, but Star Trek is set 400 years from now. Yeah, okay, I, I understand that. But yeah, still this... the, the idea that it was con conceived back in the 80s with Next Gen more than anything else Uh so slightly outdates this, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, because I did think about that as an argument. People are going to say, oh, Star Trek this and Star Trek that, but they're saying the technology will exist 300 years from now. This movie said, oh, it's only going to exist 40 years from now. And, of course, it's only 12 years away, and we've got it now. So, yeah, you're right. You could argue that Star Trek were ahead of the game, but they had to think miles into the future with starships and all the rest of it. So they had to think really out of the square. And they probably thought of things that, you know, this is never going to happen. This is just good for science fiction, right? Uh, whereas Demolition Man is saying, well, it's set on Earth, so it kind of has to sort of feel real. And uh, But, uh, yeah, I was actually quite impressed with this. So they've done some good stuff here. Um, iPods, iPods, iPads, the ability to walk around and communicate with people. 
Uh, face to face is almost like a large version of the phone, but people actually do use iPads for communication. Um, and unlike, say, I think it was in Total Recall where everything was stuck on the walls, in this they're actually walking around and carrying devices. So uh, that's actually pretty impressive. So um, there would have been people back in '93 thinking, "Oh, geez, I can't wait to have something like that." Well, it's everywhere now, and of course, some people are watching this show right now on a similar device. So uh, you can't get a more better prediction than that, which is kind of cool. So well done to them. Uh, now, the running man, uh, as was pointed out by somebody else, they're not in the running man, they're hunting people down and they're killing them, right? But you could argue that the running man, which was only which was set to, uh, three years ago, was a precursor to the Survivor TV series, just without the killing of the, of the contestants. The principle, though, is effectively the same, where you've got people, you've put them somewhere and you're just watching to see how they survive. And, um, and you put them through tests and all the rest of it. So uh, you could actually argue that the running man sort of was on the right track for predicting how Survivor uh, was going to work. And, of course, Survivor now has a huge fan base and there's been plenty of shows and a lot of people love it. So uh, I would argue that considering Survivor did not exist in 1987, to the best of my knowledge, they get a tick for that too, which is um, very cool. Uh, Dick Tracy, now, of course, this harks right back to the uh, the cartoon series where he used his watch as a phone, and, of course, we've got the movie. I just used the picture of the movie here. You've got 100% right. Everything's on the phone. I don't know how many people actually use their watch, though. It was a big thing a couple of years ago. I don't know if it's still common now uh, for people using their watches with their phones, but you can if you want to. So um, Dick Tracy in all its formats, yeah, they're on the ball, so uh, well done for them. And The Net, another Sandra Bullock uh, movie, uh, from 1995, because the internet was still relatively young then. The key things that uh, this film brought out was people being able to live at home and just do everything online. That is shopping online, delivering online, ordering pizzas on the online. She actually does it in the movie, orders a pizza and gets delivered to her. And, of course, the old concept of identity theft, which was still relatively new back in 1995, the idea that people could steal someone else's digital identity and reproduce it and then... Um, impersonate that person uh that was a long way off i think that uh from um what they were thinking back in 95 so the net was right on the money in regards to that so in regards to the whole um home shopping concept as well as identity theft so they were really switched on so well done for them um here we go and now back to the future too everybody loved back to the future too it was a bit of a hark and of course it was all set in 2015 a few years ago very very cool very groovy okay um okay so hoverboards no nah, we don't have those right <laughs> shoes that do themselves up hang on for a sec shoes that do themselves up no nah, we don't have those actually Sorry. they did do a limited edition nah. uh hang on hang on let me finish let me finish i'll answer your questions i know exactly what you're going to say Clothes that fit themselves, no, we don't have those. And, of course, Jaws 19, we don't have those. All right, you're going to say, oh, but they did try to develop a hoverboard and they did try to develop shoes that could fit themselves. They mm. didn't do that as a natural part of progression. They did that because the film did it, okay? True. It didn't just happen because, oh, that's the next stage of evolution of, of a product. They said, oh, no, it's 2015. Let's try and invent a hoverboard. And, of course, I don't know about you, but I can't buy a hoverboard down the street. And... They said, okay, let's get the shoes that fit themselves. And, of course, Nike were the only ones who tried it because it was in the movie. So because they tried to copy the film, it doesn't sort of really count. It wasn't a natural evolution of the product. So as a result, it gets a big red X. But in 20, George 29, um, number 19, that certainly didn't happen, even though people said, oh, he's posters for it and everything else. I'm nearly at the end. But one thing that Back to the Future did get right, big ass screens showing things outside. TVs now are so gigantic. Uh, especially with 8K resolution, that you can actually put them on walls and you can actually show images of um, uh, other places. I mean, I saw in the news just recently, people were actually sitting in front of their TV showing a, a view of the ocean because they couldn't go on a cruise. So it's effectively the same thing. And the key thing about uh, this is uh, that TV that was invented uh, a couple of years ago to represent when it switched off a painting on a wall. And I've seen one of those in real life, and that looks 100% like a real painting. So uh, it's the same principle. So Back to the Future 2 definitely got that one right. So uh, well done to them. And the other thing they got right was the idea of multiple screens. So you could actually look at different things at different times, picture in picture of you, which um, back in when the film was made would have only been in professional environments. Now, of course, you can do it on your own TV. And you can actually do picture in picture views and look at multiple screens at the same time. So um, that's actually quite common now. So... Um, that's another thing I think that they got right, so well done to them. Uh, and this one scares me a little bit because I actually saw this on the news two weeks ago.
because of the COVID-19 crisis, there was a guy in your person in Europe who actually got their drone and took used their drone to take their dog for a walk and they had footage of it. And that is about as correct as you can get in this sequence. And even though it missed it by about four years, drones, of course, are now becoming a big thing. But the fact that that actually happened, might have been four years, five years late, but the fact that the guy used the drone to take his dog for a walk, which is exactly what this shot is showing, uh, that goes to show that, yeah, that people would have laughed at this back in 1989, and it turns out to be 100% correct. So how about that, eh? What a spin out. Um, now, this one, of course, this is just a bit of a joke. This is obviously 12 monkeys set in 2035. The whole world has been decimated by a virus. Everybody has to wear it's like a life suits whenever they're walking around the streets and whatever else. I don't know about you, but that stands to me like today. So um, out there at the moment, and it's uh, you could almost argue it's the same thing. And there are people wandering around, especially certain countries, all with a whole hazmat suit on and everything. So you could actually ask, argue that 12 Monkeys has become the real deal. So how good is that? And I think I've got one more to go, which I think shows... Of all the greatest predictions, and this is from a TV series, all the greatest predictions from a show uh, regarding the future, you can't go past this, and that is, of course, Donald Trump being president, as predicted by The Simpsons in the year 2000. Who would have saw that one coming, eh? So there you go. Very good. And there's a big tip. A few different things. So that's one of them, but that's probably the scariest one. Yeah, that's that's pretty funny. That, that would have been done as a joke, and it turns out to be true. I mean, 100%. Yeah. Correct. Right. So, uh, yeah, you can't sort of beat that. So, well done. Anyway, that's the, yeah. Uh, there you go. So, there you go, guys. Uh, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a bit of a bit of a Google from the Daggy. So, there you go. Very good. All right. I, I got a couple that you might uh, agree or disagree with. Because I, I saw that there was a couple that I sort of saw, sort of come across by accident. And one was the cable guy, Jim Carrey. Yes, Barry I did read about that. Yeah. Um, which brought up uh, smart TVs, streaming, online gaming, and home shopping. Uh, the other one I saw, which another Jim Carrey film, was The Truman Show. Yes. Where they follow him around reality television. Uh, and that was 1998. Now, that came, I think, after, potentially, uh, Sylvanian Waters, which was shot in Sydney uh, oh, by the crikey. ABC, I think, in 1990, or was it? It was late 80s. Were they followed... 90s, I think it was, late 90s. Was it late 90s? Was it? I thought it was earlier. I think so. But anyway, yeah, it was one of the precursors to reality television in total. Yeah. So and that was an Australian production. So Yeah, yeah, yeah there's going to be... Exactly Sorry, Gal. Sorry, Gal. No, that's it. Yeah, there's going to be examples of things that I didn't cover off. I did look at them and I thought, okay, I don't want to make the presentation too long. And there's going to be a conjecture of some. I mean, some people are suggesting that 2001 A Space Odyssey had a couple of things right. Okay, yeah, it's like, good on them, well done, yep, it's all good. Um, but uh, by and large, uh, they got more things wrong than they got right. So they can't be too mm -hmm. proud of themselves as in 2001 A Space Odyssey. And um, But it does sort of show that uh, some movies were uh, on the ball. And, of course, we've got films that are being produced now that are in the distant future, and who knows how correct they're going to be when we look at that stuff today. So, But it was just a bit of a sample of things that uh, I thought were, were worth bringing up. Mm, yeah. I've got a couple too. So oh. harking back to uh, Star Trek Next Generation, they had the pad. So uh, it was like the precursor to the Kindle. So it wasn't, yeah. I don't think it worked on a video function, but it certainly was something that used to uh, uh, read and, and document and that. Reminds me of the uh, the Kindle. Very good. Actually, I remember um, the producers of Star Trek Voyager saying that, you know, Janeway's computer that she had on her desk, they said they got that completely wrong because it's a bit of a bulky item. And they said today, you know, look, we've got smaller devices now, all right, and this is supposed to be 400 years in the future, so they kind of really uh, um, screwed that one up. But, you know, something, they'll get some things right and some things wrong. Um, so, I mean, one day they'll, they will may have flying cars and people say, oh, we saw that in Blade Runner. It's like, oh, well. There you go. Good luck to them. So uh, anyway, so there It'll you go. Be just like the Jetsons. The Jetsons had the car before then. Yeah, exactly right. And another example is in the fifth element where um, Zorg has all the computers that clean the desk and all the rest of it and the, and the floors and whatever because they exist uh, currently as well. Very good. Okay, we've still got 16 people. We've had mostly 16 people watching since the beginning, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm glad you guys and uh, girls and guys have sort of stuck with the show. Um, but we don't want to go past an hour and a half uh, because the last thing we want to do is outstay our welcome. I know for some people it's this is the highlight of the week. It's very exciting stuff. 
But uh, no, we like to finish uh, you guys wanting more because that way we know you're going to come back next week. Um, and the good thing is if you did join late, this actually does get saved on Facebook and you can, can go back and re-watch it all uh, if you feel so inclined to punish yourself. And uh, But, yeah, do that. Um, spread the word about the, about the show to everybody out there. And other than that, we're going to sign off. We're going to leave you all to it. And we'll see you next Friday. And in the interim, make sure you stay nerdy. Stay nerdy.